Hi guys, how you doing? So today we're going to take a look at AIOs, placement, and whether push or pull is the right way to go. Does it matter? Let's find out. Guys, so the reason for today's video is, firstly, I wanted to do a video um, based on this because I've been curious for a while. Um, I've got my ideas as to kind of what's the best placement. Um, you know, usually I go top mounted, either push or pull. Um, I was just, it just depends on the case and whether you've got RGB fans or not. Um, and I was just curious. Now, I was curious because I've got a video coming up using the um, Z63 um, from NZXT. It's a 280 millimeter AIO. And in my case, which is the fractal design, uh, Define 7 Compact, um, it doesn't support top mounted um, 280 millimeter AIOs. I tried. It, just doesn't, doesn't just doesn't work. Um, so I've got to go front mounted. So I thought, you know what, let's bring this video forward um, just so I've got some figures to compare it against. And also just to kind of demystify kind of things really, because like I said, I've been kind of using top mounted, um, but is, the, is that the right way really? So we're going to find out today. That's going to be part one of the video. So the second part of the video is going to be looking at the placement of the actual radiator itself um, and the tubes. Um, because it does matter, um, and we're going to kind of cover that a little bit later on. Um, basically, Steve from Games and Nexus and, and JC Sense did this. Um, I just want to kind of add it to this video because it, it makes sense. Um, so we're going to look at that. So if you have a look at the test system, it's the Intel i7 10700K at stock. Um, it's the RX 6800 at stock. Um, we've got 32 gigabyte of RAM. Um, we've got the Corsair H100i Pro RGB XT calling it. Um, all the fans in the case, including the AIO. Um, our Arctic P12s, um, everything's running at 60%, so the, the AIO, the case fans, and the uh, GPU, because um, we want a consistency. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's, it's a lovely little system, and, and now we're going to show you the results. So the testing we actually did um, was to run Valley for 15 minutes, um, do Battlefield 1 for 15 minutes, silly bench looping for 10 minutes, and then we also did a video render which took about 12 minutes. So between takes, um, there was about a two minute break, um, basically for the system to stabilise me to set up the next test. Um, one of the criticisms I had about the temperatures is that um, it's not 100%. I use hardware info and for the GPU it gives um, you know, 0 0.1, 0.2, whereas with the CPU temperatures it doesn't. Um, so there is a little bit of a flex in the actual figures I've, I've given, um, but yeah, it's not going to be too, too far away from this. So the first set of testing we did um, was front pull um, and the figures are up on the screen. Um, so there weren't anything that were amazing or, or really bad, but they were just our baseline. Then did push and the figures were pretty much the same. Um, not too much difference in there to be fair. Um, so it was much of a muchness. So then we moved the AIO to the top of the case um, as I like it. And this is where I thought I knew it was going to happen. You know, GPU temperatures were going to come down a few degrees. CPU temperatures might go up a little bit. Um, but did they? Um, let's have a look at the results. Um, and GPU temperatures are basically the same. Um, they're a little bit cooler, maybe a degree here or there. Um, but CPU temperatures, they rocketed. Um, approximately between four and seven degrees. And I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that the GPU temperatures were essentially the same and the and the CPU temperatures had like just, just shot up. It was just like, what's going on here? Um, and then you kind of think about it and, you know, is it the testing that I did? No, I, I ran everything at 60%. Um, if I hadn't done that and I'd let it, you know, on a fan curve, um, would it have been different? Maybe. Um, but it kind of makes me realise now that whatever logic I had, it just didn't really play out. It didn't play out in this case. Um, if I had a different case, you know, would it be any different? I don't know. So to be honest, it changed my mind, you know. I thought I knew the answer. It was top mounted. Um, that was the way to go. But no, I was wrong. Now, the temperatures that I've kind of got are not horrendous. But if you want the best temperatures, then you probably want to go front mounted based on these figures. You know, you might get a different set of results in, in, a, in a different case, in a different um, fang setup. You know, if you have a fan curve, um, which steps up, you know, because, because I've got it 60% constant, um, there's that consistent um, airflow. Um, whereas if you kind of you got your CPU on a different different fan curve to your GPU, um, it's not going to flow as well. So you know that could be a, that could be a reason. Um, but yeah, I was I was really surprised. It definitely has changed my mind, um, and now I'm not going to be kind of scared by front mounting AIOs at all. Um, so when it comes to doing the NZXT Z63, yeah, I'm I'm not worried now. 
So the second part of the video is when to look at actually the radiator um, and its placement um, in relation to the pump. Now it is um, quite important to be honest. Um, Stephen Gamers Nexus did a great job on it. Um, Jay from JC Sense also kind of did it. And we're gonna kind of cover it here because it, it is really important um, and something which you really need to bear in mind because before that video, I didn't really think about it um, and I'd used you know, the AIOs incorrectly. Um, and it kind of makes sense now that I did have a couple of problems with, um, with some in the past um, that I just, I just didn't realize, you know? So, so we're gonna cover those. So there are five ways to position your radiator um, and we're gonna go from the worst to the best and hopefully it makes sense. Um, if not, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. You can check out Steve and Jay's uh, video um, because they'll probably cover it a little bit better than me. So the worst way on my list um, at number five is having the radiator in the bottom of the case. Now this is bad because air has only got one way to go and that's up. Um, that's gonna go into the pump and obviously that's where you're gonna get your issues. So number four is when it's front mounted, um, but the top of the radiator is lower than the pump. So this is, you know, in your older cases when you've got DVD drives, um, but you've got space for, for an AO in the front, um, it would loop down and you know, that's gonna cause you problems because the same way it's gonna be in the bottom of the case, um, the air has only got one way. It's gonna go travel up to the top of the pump and that's bad. So number three is a traditional way um, of front mounting your AIO. Um, you've got the tubes at the top um, and so long as those tubes are higher than the pump, you've got absolutely no problems. That's fantastic. That's where most people are gonna have it. And you know, as we saw today, that's kind of the best results that I, I saw overall. So number two is front mounted with the tubes down. Now this isn't always possible with AIOs because the tubes aren't long enough. Um, and obviously, you know, your GPU might be really long, so it may not be possible. Um, but this is good because the air is gonna get trapped in the top of the radiator and that's what you want. Sometimes, you know, I'm not gonna lie, it is gonna be in the actual pump itself. Um, and you'll be able to hear that. Um, but all you need to do is, once your system's switched off, of course, um, is just to tip it um, so that you kind of get the air and it kind of works its way into the radiator. And the best method is top mounting. Um, this is basically because the air is gonna rise, it's gonna sit in the top on a very thin layer or, um, on the radiator. And for, the, for that job, the pump um, and, all, and the whole system, it's the best. Now, it's not the best for cooling, as we've seen today. Um, but yeah, it's the best um, for obviously for, for wear and tear for your pump. Um, but really, any, anything from, from one to three is gonna be absolutely fine. Just make sure that the top of the radiator, um, where the tubes are, for instance, is higher than the actual pump itself and you're not gonna have a problem. Guys, we're at the end of the video now. I um, hope you've enjoyed it, I hope it's made sense. Just to kind of clarify, um, from my testing, the best temperatures um, for the CPU and GPU combined was definitely front mounted. It doesn't matter if you go push or pull. Um, and then when it comes to the AIO and looking after it and, and treating it the way it should be treated, um, just make sure that the pump is not the highest point of the loop and you're gonna be absolutely fine. So obviously there are quite a few kind of ways in which you can mount it. Um, but yeah, just, just look after your AIO and it will look after your CPU. Um, guys, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.